Welcome to Luminance TV. In today's episode, we're uncovering a shocking animal hoarding case in Tampa Bay, Florida, involving over 300 animals. This story from the Polk County Sheriff's Department highlights critical issues around animal welfare and mental health. Let's watch as we delve into the details of this complex and sensitive case. More than 300 animals are now getting the care they desperately need after they were rescued from an extreme hoarding case in Polk County. A 48-year-old woman in Frostproof now faces hundreds of animal neglect and cruelty charges. I have Randa from SPCA with me, and as many of you already know, Randa and our Randa and SPCA and Shelly work hand in glove with us and we are thankful beyond words for all of the help that the SPCA and Best Friends gives us dealing with these horrible issues. I'm going to give you a synopsis of this hoarding case we are working and then Randa will give you more details because we actually received the tip on this case from the SPCA. So we went to do a welfare check because we everyone was suspicious that we had a hoarding case. And when our deputies arrived, we found what one of my very experienced people that investigates from our animal cruelty unit an unbelievable situation. He said it's in the top three that uh, uh, top three events that I've ever seen. He said it's just words can't ad adequately describe it. So here's what we found out, and I'll introduce you to Lisa Lasherite. Lisa is 48 years of age. She is a second grade teacher at Ben Hill Griffin Elementary School in Frostproof, Florida. She lives on Fasini Drive in Frostproof as well. And as she describes herself, I rescue animals. Well, as we got in to do this well-being check, we found out that she and her mother live in this double-wide mobile home. And as the investigation unfolded, they had 309 animals living inside this mobile home with them. Did you hear what I said? You can't make this stuff up. You know it's got to be true. 309 animals in this mobile home. So as we are trying to work through this, we find a 75-year-old lady, her mother. And her mother is also living in this environment. So the two of them are. The investigation started yesterday morning at about 9.50, and, and we are still working now on this investigation as we speak. You can imagine the challenges we have when this 309 animals almost doubles the population of our shelter. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. We seized 142 cats. Of the 142 cats, more than 100 were roaming freely in the house. We seized 164 ducks, chickens, and one peacock and we seized three dogs. Now it's important to point out that Lisa is not an evil person. She is an overwhelmed cat lady. She clearly violated the law. She continued to violate the law. We found cats that were neglected, cats that were significantly ill, She's being charged both with misdemeanor and felony charges as it results, as it relates to the animal. In addition to that, she's charged with elderly neglect, which is a felony, because she's the caregiver for her 75-year-old mother. Now, I'm going to 
go through a couple of the circumstances that we saw immediately. And as they say, you know, this can be upsetting to some people. How about this? Now, understand they're living in this mobile home with the feces all over the place and the urine up and down the wall. Well, how about this one? Here's a cat looking up at the door. Did I repeat enough that they're living in this mobile home you and I can't imagine? Or how about the duck living in this container? These animals were neglected and abused just by the environment they were kept in. Here's an example of a very sick cat. This cat is remarkably ill. The one that I don't think you can ever forget, this is their washing machine. How's that? Do you think they got a feces problem in and around their washing machine? And then there's the big picture. This is the cats on top of the filing cabinet. And all that is going on there. Imagine 100 plus cats roaming freely in a double wide mobile home. Imagine ducks and chickens stacked on top of each other, four and five cages high that are now defecating and urinating through the open wire down onto the animals before them. Imagine a lady who shows up at the SPCA with 20 or 22 cats to have them spayed and neutered. Imagine that when you drive into the driveway and they live somewhat off of the road and you get out of your car at their fence gate, you can smell the smell from there. We had the fire to Department come out and do a free air quality test inside the mobile home and they had as high as a hundred parts per million in the urine or the ammonia smell more than 50 parts per million is hazardous to human and animal health and this 75 year old lady who was an invalid and couldn't get around very well on her own, lived in it all the time. And these cats lived in it all the time. And these ducks and these chickens lived in it all the time. The people at school said that she smelled all the time. Do you think? I mean, can you imagine and interestingly enough, the people at SPCA are the experts. When she came in, they looked at the animals, they looked at her, they smelled her and said, this lady's a hoarder. And they were sure that there was neglect going on and they called us. So I'll have Randa give you the details from SPCA and once again I want to thank you and your organization and Shelly the big boss who's not able to be with us today because she has other obligations for all of the work you do with us to help us save the animals. Then I'll wrap up talking about what we're going to do and what we need your help with because we have so many animals at the shelter right now. So the beginning of December, this client came in twice with a total of 22 cats to be spayed and neutered. Upon arrival, the odor of ammonia was overwhelming, which is a clear sign we might have some problems. Upon examination of the 22 cats she brought in for spay and neuter, they were in extremely poor condition. There was severe flea infestation, missing fur, 
uh, upper respiratory with green nasal and eye discharge, and also a lot of wounds from fighting. So noting the very poor condition of these cats and discussing it with the client, she made a comment that the ones still at her property are in way worse condition which clearly made us realize we need to get animal control involved and do a welfare check on the existing animals on the property due to the ones we just saw, 22 of them, were extremely emaciated and in poor condition. We did send home medication with the client for the cats um, in hopes that she would medicate them to help with the upper respiratory with the 22 that we saw, seven of them did get medication. So once we reached out to uh, Polk County Animal Control, we um, will commit to taking the 22 that we spayed and neutered for her in addition to helping them out as well. So here's where we are. Animal Control is open the rest of today and open in the morning. Monday's Christmas. If you thought about, or haven't thought about, maybe a pet for a loved one, now would be a great time. We need you to help us get the animals out that we have ready to go, or that we can get ready to go, so that we'll have space for the ones we had to take yesterday. Now, it's animal control, obviously, is going to be closed to the public on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, which are holidays. But Wednesday through next Saturday, once again, will be open. I have waived the adoption fees on all the cats and all the dogs through the end of the year. So come get a, a cat or a dog, a special friend forever. That's going to include all the shots, the chips. It's out the door and ready to go at no cost to you. We have an overload right now is because, because of this rescue that we did. We're doing our best to save all of these cats, all of these ducks, all of these chickens. I'm grateful that Lee says, I said, she's not an evil person. She surrendered all but three dogs and three cats to us. So they are now legally in our possession. We're going to take the ducks and the chickens to an auction tonight. It's called a small animal auction. It's on, I believe, Highway 542, just east of Cumby Road. So if you want cat, if you want ducks or chickens, please go there tonight and bid on these birds, and, because we need to get them into someone's home and out of the shelter. That leaves us with, what, 142 cats to deal with. We appreciate SPCA who's going to take the 22 they originally uh, neutered or spayed, and they're going to help us with some others. But if you, we also have a lot of cats that's already ready to go. If you'll come take those, it'll create more space for these. The investigation is ongoing. We anticipate that Lisa will receive additional charges. We are going to report to, in fact, have reported to the school board. Apparently, her physical condition while she was at work teaching second graders, because as it's explained to me, she smelled horrendous all the time. And quite frankly, when you live in that environment, you can't get clean. And we're, we also want you to know that the 75-year-old mom was taken to the hospital for an evaluation because of the condition she was living in and the condition we found her. Okay, with that, do you have any questions for Randa or for me? Just a quick question. Are any of the cats that were taken from the home already healthy enough for adoption, or are you giving up the cats you already have? We have to process them in. We have to doctor them. We, we see that they've got fleas. The, the short answer is no. We've got a lot of healthy cats that are all ready for adoption. If you'll take those and give us space to, to house these, that would be good because we still have to doctor them. 
the good news is we didn't find any deceased animals. I think her intent was not evil, but she was clearly overwhelmed. And she didn't cooperate with SPCA, who offered to take them off of her hands. She asked for food, but she would not cooperate with them. She, they asked to go out and take a look. She wouldn't let them come to the house. She knew she had a problem. When we came, she admitted she had a problem, and she turned them over to us. But my goodness, look what position she's put us in. Look what position she's put the cats and the ducks and the chickens in. So now we've got, we're going to fix this the best that we can. We need the community's help. Rhonda, my question yes. for you is, what resources are available for people who might be struggling or dealing with a similar situation? Absolutely. So we have programs at SPCA Florida that are either free or low cost for spay and neuter services. And we also have a food assistant program for people on any type of assistance that qualify. And once a month, we'll give them a portion of cat or dog food to help them out to feed their pets. So we want the animals to stay in the home, but also to be healthy and in a healthy environment. So we'll try and assist them with different programs that we have. What is the max um, uh, amount of pets that someone is allowed to own in the county? There is a, a number. There's no limit. You have to certainly be able to take care of them and have the appropriate environment for them, but there's no max. If you happen to have a farm and you can handle five or ten cats and take care of them and appropriately house and feed and physically and, and take care of them and have an environment that's good for their welfare, please come get them. And they're free right now to the end of the year. But I can't overstate how much help that SPCA provides for us. But this is a partnership. You can't have dogs and cats that aren't spayed and neutered, that continue to have kittens and have dogs and have puppies and have and have and have, and then dump them on the side of the road and expect us to magically deal with them by ourselves. This is not a SPCA problem. It's not a humane society problem. It's not an animal control problem. It's a community problem. And it takes everyone in the community to deal with it appropriately. Now, she's criminally charged. She's going to gather more criminal charges. We're also going to encourage the school system to look. I mean, she was, well, let's just call it like she, she was nasty. And she was going in and interacting with second graders. You know, can you imagine sending your child to school and the teacher just came out of this environment that's going to be interacting with and touching your child today? Come on, girl. What is wrong with you? So the investigation is still underway. There's lots of work to do. Sure, if at this point, have any of the animals have, to, have they had to be euthanized? Not and yet, but we're, we may... We may be there before the day's over. We don't know. I mean, we've got a vet that's having to evaluate 309 animals. So we're looking at the, the sickest first, but and have been working on this all morning long after we got them to our shelter. And so far, they've not had to euthanize any. And so we, we hope and pray that that's not the case. But the end game here, folks, is there's only so much room in the end. So if you don't help us, at some point in time, we don't have a choice but euthanize. We're not rushing to that conclusion, and we hope that we can adopt out, and the community can come together and come adopt and make, help us make room in the shelter so we can take care of these sick animals and get these healthy ones at home for Christmas. Sharp, has the school said anything about her employment to this point? No, the, they have not. We have made them aware of the circumstances of her arrest and apparently the feedback that I'm getting is that 
everyone at the school recognized she smelled. What do you think? Just saying. Okay? I wish everyone a wonderful Christmas. May God bless you all and your families, and we will continue to work together to help the, the animals. They didn't ask to be put in cages and stacked on top of each other and live in that environment. This story not only sheds light on the welfare of animals, but also questions the societal response to mental health crises. The charges faced by the elderly woman in this case raise ethical considerations. Are they appropriate and fair, given her mental state and circumstances? How should our society balance legal accountability with compassion and support for mental health? We invite you to reflect on these issues and share your thoughts. Thank you for joining Luminance TV for this insightful episode. Please share your views in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe for more content that delves beyond the surface.